to apply Spring Security or actually attackers Spring Security. And password here as. Hello everyone. Very warm welcome to Think Constructive. I am Isha. In this session, I will be discussing how to secure your Spring Boot application with the help of Spring Security. I will be starting the Spring Security discussion right from the beginning. So I'll be talking about what is Spring Security, why Spring Security is so popular and so important and that will be followed by how to apply Spring Security in your Spring Boot application. This will be the detailed explanation session that will be followed by the demonstration. So stay connected, watch the session till the end so that you don't miss upon on any of the core concept. Let us quickly start with the what is Spring Security discussion. Let's have a quick look on a couple of key points related to Spring Security. It is a framework that focuses on securing Spring applications. That means Spring Security already provides a set of library and packages which helps us to secure our Spring applications. It is a powerful and highly customizable authentication and authorization framework. I'll explain you in a while about authentication and authorization. So it helps you to authenticate as well as authorize your Spring Boot applications and the customizations are also possible. Let's have a detailed explanation about securing your Spring applications. Here is a pictorial representation where you can see an application server is holding a Spring application. Users can communicate with this Spring application as we all know. There is a user one who is trying to talk to Spring application. There is another user. They are also trying to talk to Spring application. No issues. What if these red users are actually attackers? Attackers means they are trying to corrupt the software or trying to do some wrong stuff with the software. There is no one to stop them. That means there has to be someone who is guarding this application, right? Who is protecting this application from these kind of attacks. These attacks can be anything. Any unauthorized person right now can enter in my Spring application and do anything, whatever they want, because there is nobody who is restricting them, who is guarding my application right now. This pink user, I know this user is a normal user. He's just trying to use the software for the given purposes. But these red users are trying to do some malicious thing or trying to corrupt the software. So everyone is allowed right now. What is needed? A guard is needed here to protect the application. That means there has to be something like this sitting here. The green box now you can notice. I've written a filter over there. You can assume this is a spring security layer. So what is now happening? This layer is actually checking every user. First of all, whether you are allowed to access the software or not. And if even if you are allowed, what kind of access you should have? So first of all, it will check whether this red user is allowed. No, not allowed will reject the call. Whether this pink user is allowed. Yes, it will accept the call. And now the next step of the check will be what kind of access of the software this pink user has, right? So the first step is to check the user's credentials. That is precisely the authentication of the user. So first step, authenticate the user, whether the user is allowed to enter into the system or not. And the second step, what kind of access? And that is called authorization, access controls, right? So that is the next step spring security layer will be doing. So what this is spring security, this green box is actually doing here it is intercepting each and every call which is trying to get into the application which is trying to access the application it is first of all intercepting that call and authenticating if the authentication is successful then authorizing and then allowing user according to the user's permitted access all this thing is taken care by spring security if it is applied in the spring application all right so this is how spring security helps 
to protect spring applications and needless to say nowadays why security is extremely and rather i should say the topmost requirement of any software because so many malicious attacks are happening and all kind of bad stuffs happens when any application gets attacked i'm not saying that this is or any other security solution is a foolproof solution but yes they helps a lot in order to protect the software all right now let's move towards why spring security so here are a couple of points why spring security is considered as a best solution to secure a spring or a spring boot application the spring security can be easily applied to secure application i'll just show you in a while how easy is it to use spring security all right then you'll get to know how easy it is to you know implement it another comprehensive support provided for authentication we all understand it now what is authentication then authorization it also protects against attacks what kind of attacks could be it can be session fixation or click jacking or csrf that is cross site request forgery so these kind of extensive supports are provided by spring security it also provides us optional integration with the spring mvc and servlet api integration so that is where spring security is widely used and and very very popular among developers all right so now let's see couple of key points how to add spring security and then i will start with the demonstration okay so the first point is to add spring security dependency followed by default spring security behavior and then we will see how to customize username and password all right so these things will be seen in the demonstration okay so to start with the demonstration i will first quickly bootstrap our spring boot project therein i will show you which dependencies to add and then we will see the remaining stuffs okay meanwhile i would also like to mention there are more spring boot sessions available on this channel session details are getting displayed on the screen and also the playlist link is tagged in the above card section all right so feel free to explore these sessions these will be very very helpful to you all right let us switch to the browser window and bootstrap the spring boot application all right so i'll just say spring initializer the first link what i am getting is a start.spring.io this will help me to bootstrap a spring boot application and this is one of the fantastic way to bootstrap your spring boot application i will choose project as maven project because maven as a build tool i'll be using spring boot version let it be 2.7.5 group will be think constructive so com dot think constructive artifact will be spring security demo okay description demo project for spring boot security let's say okay packaging method i'll be using as jar and java version 17 now have a look on the dependencies because that is the top most important part so i'll be building a spring boot rest application and will be securing that so first important dependency i should have is web dependency because this will help me to create the restful application another dependency is security i will be adding because i want to secure my spring boot application so spring security is a dependency which helps me to authenticate and authorize my spring boot application all right so these two important dependencies i have added and the next step i will click on generate the moment i will say generate it will create a zip project for me and the project will be downloaded at my local system okay so the next step i will be extracting this zip and will load the project in my editor so i'll be using intellij ide editor you can use any java editor of your choice so i'll just open intellij ide editor and i have already extracted and loaded this spring security demo project in intellij editor all right so here you can see src main java and inside this com dot think constructive spring security demo and spring security demo application that is 
my starting point of a Spring Boot application is already created for me. All right. And in pom.xml, let us check the dependency of what all we have got. So here in pom.xml, you can see dependency or dot spring framework dot boot and important thing artifact id spring boot starter security okay so this is the security dependency and it is a must have for the spring application which you would like to secure and another important dependency is the spring boot starter web because i want to create a restful application okay but for security remember spring hyphen boot hyphen starter hyphen security is the must have dependency if you really want to secure your spring boot application okay now let us quickly create the controller i'll just name it as demo controller okay i think i have done some spelling mistake so let me just quickly refactor okay controller Okay, so my public class demo controller is here. Here on top of this, I will say rest controller. Okay, and if I want a particular mapping, so I will just say request mapping and inside this, I will give the path. Okay, so demo, let's say I have given. Okay. So now here inside this public class demo controller, I want to expose a get URL. So that should be annotated with get mapping. Okay. And then I will just say public. Let it return as a string. Get demo. Okay. And uh, let us assume it doesn't accept any argument. It will just return. Let's say I'll just tag it as h1, h1, and I'll just keep the closing tag as h1, okay, close, and inside this, let us give some friendly message, spring security test demo successful okay so this is how i have exposed the url okay and let us go back to pom.xml and for now i'll just take out security dependency okay so it is a normal restful application which is not secure first we will quickly see how it works and then we will include back our security dependency and we'll see the change okay so now it is a normal Spring Boot RESTful application which is exposing a GET URL. Now quickly bring up this application and see what happens. Okay. Just run this application. Here in the terminal window, you can see application has started successfully and port is 8080 okay so we will go back to the browser window and here in the browser window i will just say localhost port 8080 slash demo because this was a request mapping we had given what am i getting spring security test demo successful okay no problem now let us go back to intellij terminate the server okay and now let us put back our security dependency okay i'll just save it so what we have done we have put back our spring security dependency let us refresh maven dependencies so that it should be able to map the things we have got a green tick here that means maven dependencies are refreshed now let us bring back the application Here in the terminal window, you can see started Spring Boot application on port 8080. Okay. So let us now go back to browser window and refresh it. 
what change are we noticing did we write any login form or any username password no right we just included spring security dependency and this is what has happened that means spring security framework itself is providing form based authentication wherein it is popping you up this kind of form wherein filling username and password is mandatory once that is successful and it will validate that filled username and password and once that authentication is successful then only user will be able to access the url all right so what username and password should i fill because i haven't given anything right what you have noticed we have just included the dependency and we haven't given any username and password so what happens the default behavior of spring security is the moment you will include this dependency it will have automatically username created as user okay and password as i'll show you the password let me just write it here so what will be the username username will become user now the question is password what is the password password will be every time auto generated and we will be shown here in the logs in the console logs here in the terminal window you can see what message is written using generated security password and this is the password so in this session every time you can use this password the moment you will terminate this application and again bring up the application you will get a new password for security reasons okay but username will remain user all right so i'll just copy this password and for now i'll put it here so this combination you should be filling in in the form window and then only you will be able to access the requested url okay so username will be user and password is this so let me just copy this password i'll go back to browser window i will give username as user and password here as whatever i have copied and i'll say sign in now i am able to access this url okay so see by just including the spring security dependency such powerful feature i have got by default i need not to sit and code everything for this rather it is already taken care now that is where spring security is extremely powerful and very very popular okay so now let us come back to this intellij idea editor i'll remove this i'll terminate the application now the question must be coming to your mind what if you would want to give your own username and password that you can do with the help of this application dot properties here in this application dot properties you should be filling in two entries one for user i mean username and another one is for password okay so properties are spring dot security dot user dot name okay It's equal to let's say i want to give username as test user and another property is spring dot security dot user dot password is equal to whichever password you would want to give let's say i am giving test api okay so these two properties i need to set in application dot properties if you are using application dot yaml so similar properties you should be entering there but in the yaml file format all right now let us bring up the application again and see what happens so what change are you seeing in the logs right now you are seeing a started application on port 8080 but now it is not giving you any auto generated password why because you have already set the username and password here so if you don't do it it will do it by default for you otherwise whatever you will give in application dot properties that will be taken okay so this value this customized value will override the default behavior of spring security okay so let us now go back to browser window and see the changes i'll now refresh it again 
it is again asking for the username and password okay so let me just try filling user the previous one and the password i had already copied and i will say sign in bad credentials but now when i will say test user and the password as test api now let us see what happens spring security test demo successful that means here in application dot properties whatever username and password i have given is respected and worked right so with the help of this authentication i am able to access the url if i fill anything else i won't be so authentication is applied so this was the last part which we plan to discuss in this session so there will be multiple sessions on spring security so this was the first session in that i'll be bringing more sessions on spring security where i'll be talking more about in memory database authentications followed by authorization and other security features all right to summarize what all we have covered today what and why of spring security and how to add spring security in your spring boot application followed by the default behavior demonstration and customization for the authentication all right Thank you everyone for watching the session. I hope you found it useful and you are now able to secure your Spring Boot application with the help of Spring Security. I will be bringing the next part of the session soon. So stay connected and if you haven't yet subscribed to the Think Constructive, subscribe now and if you like the session, hit the like button and share the session and channel details with more and more people, your friends, family and colleagues so that we grow together more stronger as a community i would also like to mention that there are more java and spring boot sessions available on this channel so feel free to explore them also see you in the next session thank you once again bye for now mm -hmm.